Hey folks, we all have been using console log in our code, but there are functions beyond console log. So let's talk about that in this video. All right, for this, I am going to use Chrome developer tools, but you are free to use any developer tools such as Firefox or Safari or Edge. But in this case, I will go with Chrome developer tools. So the first one that all of us have been using is console log. And I don't need to talk much about this because we already know what this is. So for example, this is a log message. If I execute this, you can see this is a log message. Now, this is something that all of us know, but this video is to talk about things that are beyond console log. So let's say another one that is console.info. And if I type this is info and execute this, you see this is info. Now this is exact same as of console log, but you can notice the difference in Firefox developer tools. If you execute console info in Firefox developer tools, you will see a small eye icon to this. Now, one of the way to utilize console.info is to use console.info to print information that might be helpful for your end user. For example, what I mean by this is you can use console.log for the messages that you want to show to the developer in the development mode and console.info for the messages that you want to show to the end user. Then what you can do at the end when you're about to deploy your project, you can search for all of the console log messages in your code and remove that and leave console.info because that will be for the end user, not for the developer. Let's move on and talk about console.warning. So if in case you want to give a warning, so you can do console.warn and then here this is a warning. Now notice if I, when I execute this, you can also see that a warning has been added here. If I click on this, you can see this warning. Now let's go back to this and then so if let's say for example you have a function which gives something let's say if the function is taking too much time so you can add console.warn there and that will show that warning here and you can also add objects here for example if i do const obg const obg equals to value equals to this is a warning message and then const.warn not const.warn const console.warn uh, this is also a warning with the object attached to it. So now you can see this is also a warning with the object. So you can also add objects inside the console.warn. With that, let's move on to the error messages. And these messages, you have seen this before because all of us have faced a lot of bugs. And whenever we have a bug, we see a console.error. And if I show that to you, so if for example, you want to show a custom error message, so you can do this like this custom error message. If I execute this, now you can see custom error message. Now this is what you can use. So for example, one of the good way to use this is, let's say you have an API call and you are using promises for that. So in the catch function, what you can do is you can use console.error and within that error, you can add error.message and that message will be shown on the developer tools when the function catch is executed. All right, moving on. Now we have a long list here. So maybe we want to clear this. So now there are two ways. One is to click on this button in the developer tools of Chrome and that will clear the console. Other one is console.clear. And if I do this, that clears the screen for me. So with that, let's see what trace can do. So for example, if I have a function uh, and I will call this function a and within that I do return function b and within that I return function and function c and what I want is I also want this to be an immediately invoked function so like this so which means that whenever this function b is executed, this function will, will also be executed. So here I can do console.trace and then after this, I um, so we are missing something here. So let's figure that out what that is. All right, now this is working. And now let's see. So if I do function a and invoke this, this will just give me uh, this whole function. So I have to use the brackets twice no so if i execute this now you can see console.trace was also executed and now it gives me the trace from where it was called so now here function c 
and then function B and then anonymous. So what this means is that trace can be used to output the trace from where the trace was called. So from where this function was called. So it is useful to get the trace of the functions. If you have a lot of functions or if you are using callbacks or if you're working with a library or framework, so there you can use console.trace. With that, let's clear the screen. And then the next one is table. So table is used to present the data in the table format, for example, console.table. And then here uh, I can use an array A, B, C. And if I execute this, so we have the values and on the left side we have index. So the index is the index of those values. But we can also change those index. For example, if I have an object with the name person. Now what I can do here is first name and make say this Asran and then last name Khatak and save this uh, and then console dot table. And within this table, I pass person. So now you see that the index is not the values or the index numbers, but it is the name of the properties. That is the first name and the last name. With that, let's talk about something that can help us with performance, that is time. So let's say if you want something to track how long a fun specific function or an operation takes, so you can use console.time. Now if I execute this, a timer will be started. So let's do that. Now a timer has been started, but we don't see anything. We can also have some custom timers. What I mean by that is to give it some label. For example, I call this fn and do this. Now how can we check what timers we have currently? So for that, we can use time log that is time log like this. So now if I execute this, it gives me the default, which is this one. So this one has a label default by default. So if I do console dot time log, and then here I pass fn, now we have the time for fn. So now notice you see the change in both the timers. So if I do like this, it has a name default, but if I give it a custom label, then it has the name or label fn or whatever the label I have given it. Now to stop the function, what I can do is console.timeend. And again, I have to give it a label. So if I do this, it will stop the default label. So let's see. Now it has stopped default. If I now again do console.timelog, let's see. Timer default does not exist because of course we just ended that. And if I do console time log fn again, it exists because we have not ended it yet. So let's also end that time end fn and now we can see fn. So that is one of the function that you can use to track how long the operation takes. So for example, if you have a function, let's say test time and then all of all this function will do is just do console log hello world, save this and then here console dot time and then here console dot time end. So now if I do test time, uh, you can see this is how long this console dot log takes. So if I do this again, every time we do this, it will have a different number. That is something that you can use to track how long the operation takes. All right, one last function that we can discuss is assert that is console.assert. This is a function that gives us a message if something is, if a Boolean value is false. If it is true, it does not give any message. For example, if I do two modulo zero equals to zero, um, so this is a Boolean value and then this is a condition and then if that condition is false, I want to print error. If I execute, now this is false, of course. But if I do two modulo two, now nothing happens because now this condition is true. In this case, this condition was false, but in this case, this condition is true. So for example, here is another complex example, obg, and I type test equals to hello, uh, maybe not test, change the, the test to value, and then obg2 equals to obg, and obg3 equals to obg, using spread syntax. And then console.assert, so if I now compare obg with obg2, not matched. If if both of these are not same, so it should give me an error message not matched. So if I execute this, 
it does not give me an any error message that is because obg2 has a same reference as obg but let's see what happens if i do obg3 now it gives me assertion field not matched that is because we are using spread syntax which means the values are copied one by one to this so obg3 and obg has completely different references that is why it gives me this error message so assertion can be used to check for boolean values and if they are false it gives us an error message so that were some of the functions that you can use apart from console log and those are not all that we have we have some more that i have not discussed but feel free to learn more about that in the mdn docs for example we have this directory our debug etc